Ooh. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today, we're bringing back to the show Charlie Gerard. Thank you so much for coming back. How are you today? I'm good. Thanks for letting me come back. It should be working all good today. I am. Hopefully. I am so ready. Uh, no, <laughs> I, I cannot wait. Like this is something that I've been looking forward to so much um, because you have consistently been one of my favorite devs to watch because you just come up with the most off the wall creative stuff. Um, like I, I've, I remember seeing you do uh, the like the on stage Street Fighter demo, right? And and like I, I even before then, like way back in the day, I feel like I saw you do a bunch of facial recognition stuff where you would like make faces to control the app and like just so many amazing things that I've seen you create um, that are are mind boggling to me because uh, I don't you know this is a space that I never go in, so uh, I cannot wait. So uh, for those of us who aren't familiar with your work and, and haven't been Twitter stalking you like I have, uh, <laughs> what, uh, could, could you give us a little bit of a background? Um, about just like why I do science stuff or just what my career? I, you know what? I, anything that you're interested in, I, I'd love to hear a little bit of your, your background and kind of, yeah, what, what, how did you get into doing these more, what, what feel to me like science experiments, right? <laughs> Yeah, kind of. Um, so I have a, like, I studied um, code like in a boot camp. So I don't have like a um, CS degree. I didn't do any of this at like uni. Uh, my background is in marketing and advertising. So I think this is where I got interested into like more of the creative side of the digital world. Because when you're in advertising, I think the more creative idea that you have, the more your campaign is going to like work. Mm -hmm. uh, but then on the job, I didn't find it super fulfilling. Uh, sure. So I, I switched to a bootcamp to learn to code. And then I actually started mixing that creative side to actually being able to build the ideas that I had instead of, sometimes it's frustrating if you have an idea, but you don't have the coding skills to build it. So you have to wait for somebody else to build it. Or if they don't believe in your idea, then they're not gonna build it. And mm -hmm. I love the, I just love the, the power that it gives you to come up with an idea and then build it and share it. And if people, you know, don't like it or whatever, it doesn't matter. You're still, um, you still got to, um, to build it yourself and experiment. And I think as I discovered how powerful it was to be able to bring ideas to, to life, I started looking into more human computer interaction mm -hmm. and, uh, instead of just, um, using, JavaScript and code to build websites. I realized that now JavaScript can be like on more platforms and um, you can, it's that like you don't have to use things the way people thought you'd use them. Um, so you don't have to use a keyboard to navigate a website or uh, if you buy a device in a store and you realize that it has an API, you actually don't have to use it the way it was defined. You can actually, with your skills as a dev, you can, uh, build your own way of interacting with it. And I really got into that and I still do now. So it's been like six years mm -hmm. that I've been building <laughs> useless things, but <laughs> <laughs> useless but fun. I find them useful. But yeah, that's kind of like the journey, boot camp and then uh, everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well and, and I think that's something that I've I've always found really inspiring about your work. And and you you have a quote that um that, that I've, I've used a, a bunch of times and that I've, I've seen shared around of useless is not worthless. And yes. I feel like that's such an important thing. Um, one of the things that I, that I always encourage people to do when they're getting into code or when they're, they're trying to figure out what to do is to build something that makes them smile or that makes them laugh and, and to do that as a way of, of exploring and like keeping yourself motivated. Like I am much more likely to finish something if I'm having fun yeah. while I do it. And exactly. You yeah. keep your passion because I think sometimes in tech things can be like there's a lot of pressure or you know, you always have comments about like, oh, what do you do? Like move boxes or things like that. And it's like sometimes that can kind of like wear you down. Mm -hmm. And if you use this same, you know, code to actually do something fun and something that's gonna excite you, like I think if I wasn't doing what I do on the side, I don't know if I would be that passionate about what I do. Um, you know, like I, I love 
my job and I love coding, but there's a moment where if you get to explore more of just what you do on the job, that's super exciting. And it doesn't matter if nobody uses it. Like the amount that you can explore and learn, uh, you can mix so many things with code. You don't have to only build an app or a website. Like there's code in research and you can build, like you can look into AR and VR and you might not do something that goes in like to production, but it doesn't matter. You can right. explore this space that sometimes feel only reserved for certain people. Mm -hmm. um, I just, well, yeah. It, and what's really exciting about it too is like, even if you build something that is is functionally useless, you, you built something that doesn't really serve a purpose. It's not going to make you money. It's not going to, you know, make your, your job better. But what you're doing is you're still getting practice making concepts fit together. You're still getting practice thinking about how to make code work. And that is a skill that will apply to your day job or to your next yeah. job or, or anything like that. And I, I think that's such a, that's such a cool thing. Um, it's like you never know. Yeah. You never know when you're going to need certain skills or certain knowledge. And there's many times where I was building something and it looked to some people useful at the time, but it taught me some things about AR and VR. And then at work, when it came the time where we needed somebody who knew stuff about AR and VR, then I knew the basics and I could say like, oh, actually, we're not going to be able to build that. Or if you want to build it, take that into consideration. Um, I don't really believe that you only have to learn what you're going to use now. Like you have no idea what you're going to do in five years. And it's just, I don't know, I just think it's interesting. I just like learning. And for that, I just build stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and like I said, it's, it's so inspirational to watch the, the string of demos that you've put together and, and to see how many creative and, and just amazing things that you can do by thinking laterally about the way that computers work and and I, I you know i love that idea of taking something and not using it for its intended purpose and just seeing what you can build by you know what if i turn this thing sideways then what does it do <laughs> um and i and i love that it's so much fun to watch um so so speaking of building things um mm -hmm. let's let's maybe move over and and start playing around with some code today uh, before we do that, a quick shout out to our sponsors. We have live captioning for the show. So if you want to uh, follow along and read along, you can do so at uh, lwj.dev slash live. We've got the show. Uh oh. Well, so the embed isn't working, but the, the live captions are. So <laughs> you can see the you can see the live captions here. These are from White Coat Captioning. They are uh, they're amazing. They've been helping us out for a while, and this is all made possible because of the sponsors for Learn with Jason. So a huge thank you to Netlify, Fauna, uh, Auth0, and Sanity, who uh, who make the the captioning possible. Um, so that being said, we are going to be using um, we're doing something a little bit different today. So we're actually looking at at Charlie's computer, and I am <laughs> on uh, VS Code Live Share. Today, so I I am still able to um, to type on on Charlie's screen, uh, but we had some issues last time where I I was going to try to write code and then we were going to move it to Charlie's computer because today we're doing like literal mind control, which is uh, this is this is like a dream come true for me. Um, always wanted to control things with my thoughts, um, but one of the things that that's required for that is a, a piece of hardware and only Charlie has that hardware. It's, it's very expensive and I didn't want to buy it for one episode. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to work on, on, uh, on your computer today. Yes. Cool. Uh, yes. I shared the whole thing, but so all my secrets are out, but, uh, it should be fine. I made sure that my, you know, nothing, no shame is shown. Um, but yeah, so I, the plan that I had for today, uh, so I probably should start by talking a bit about the headset itself and yes. what it can do. Then I want to talk a little bit about the different APIs, like the data that you can use coming from the headset. And mm -hmm. there's a few demos that um, I kind of like maybe drive and let you um, let you write uh, some code. And we're going to be able to build a few different experiments and see um, how it goes. Excellent. Just as a reminder, 
this is like hardware and this is like live coding. So there's a chance that nothing will work. But in this case, <laughs> we'll just have to chat. Um, but that's fine as well. Um, all right, let's try. Let's see what happens. Let's do so it. <laughs> Holy crap, Chris Biscardi has just subscribed for 12 oh months. God. I think that might be the first year subscription. Um, dang, thank you so much. That is very exciting. Um, all right, so uh, if you haven't already, go follow Charlie on Twitter. And what is the name of this hardware so I can pull it up while you talk about it? It's the Neurocity Notion. Do you want me to spell that? I or think <laughs> here, I think. Uh, uh, with this an one? S. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's the same. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it's that one. The one that you can pre order at the moment is the new version. And the one I have is the uh, older one. Um, so they're constantly uh, upgrading certain things. There's software updates quite regularly because the headset runs its own OS. Uh, so every time you turn it on, it checks for like a new update. But in the hardware, from what I know, um, actually, I didn't really ask them what was new in the second one. I just know that at least there's a, a battery indicator that I actually don't have in mind. Mm -hmm. uh, but there might be a battery that lasts a bit longer in the new one um, as well. And otherwise, I haven't really checked what's, um, what's new. But um, yeah, so the headset, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, um, but it like it looks like that. So it's kind of like, it, the design is like much better than other uh, headsets that I tried before. Uh, when you wear it, you actually don't look as stupid as I have on stage sometimes. Uh, <laughs> but I'll, I'll show you later when we try to do a, a live demo. But it has uh, 10 different electrodes uh, around the head. And um, so yes, yeah, so it runs its own OS. So it's like lossless data. So instead of, um, instead of streaming the data to the computer where you could lose some data from your um, brain waves, it actually does the computation on the headset and only sends to the computer when there's an event that you subscribe to. Okay. So if you uh, want to subscribe to your state of calm or a focus or a thought that you trained, uh, you don't stream the raw data directly to the computer. The computation is done on the device and it sends to the computer only the event of the probability of how calm you are or how focused or if you subscribe to a thought that you trained like um, the one i trained for this demo is going to be your uh, thinking about tapping your right foot okay um, so that the the whole um data coming from the electrodes is like um goes through like an algorithm and stuff and it's all on the headset. And what is sent to the computer is only the probability of the event being uh, me thinking about my right foot. Okay. Uh, there's okay. a few different um, so, stuff that you can, yeah. So I have a couple, just a kind of a couple like baseline questions because this is yes. all very new to me. So when, mm -hmm. you, when you're saying that you are training a thought, you, is there, so there's like a setting I assume where you're like a training mode and you yes. just, think a thought you can think about anything and when you successfully think that thought you're like that was the thought i meant to think and then the the band like continually so like, it's a bit it's a little bit um different so when you buy the um the headset you have to create a, an account on um on the on the platform uh and when you go into training mode mm -hmm. you have a list of thought that you can um that you can train that they know are um are easier to, how I'm going to say that, are easier to detect. So okay. if you, it's it's easier to detect the pattern of thought when it's about a movement of the, uh, in the body, so mm -hmm. an action. So a few different thoughts that are uh, available are, um, if you think about pinching your fingers on the right hand or the left hand, uh, okay. you can tap your right foot or your left foot, or you can think about pushing something forward. So it's all about movement because it's easier to detect um, because of where the electrodes are placed uh, around the scalp, depending okay. on the area of the brain that is responsible for movement. And, um, and when you're thinking about it, like, are you, so if it's like, I'm going to pinch my, my fingers here, I'm trying to move into the camera and it's not working. So you're like, <laughs> are you actually doing it? You're like thinking and, and doing no. the movement at the same time? I'm not actually doing the movement. Oh. I'm thinking about doing the movement. Okay. Uh, I feel like if you do the movement, you're not really thinking about doing the movement. 
I don't know. Maybe you can, but I, it, I feel th this like is, th this is what I, it's such a meta conversation. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, but when I trained, I just thought I try to stand. Uh, yeah, to sit still. And I try to be in an environment that doesn't disturb the way I think, because mm -hmm. you try to, that's really hard because you try to focus on only that thought because the way, um, so it records the data from all of the electrodes around sure. a piece of hardware. And then it's trying to find a pattern that is repeated when you think about that thought. So when you go through the training, there's different, um, you go through like steps. So you start thinking about your right foot for a few seconds, then there's a pause and the screen tells you like, you know, try to think about like nothing. And then again, and you do that like 30 times, I think, I think it's 30. So you have 30 rounds of repeating the thought of your right foot. Um, okay. And then you can, uh, you have feedback as you go through the training. So you have like a kind of like a, a bar and you try to repeat that thought and you see if you go towards like, if you try to feel the full bar uh, as it's trying to recognize the thought that you trained. Got it. And okay. it's, it's hard because if you, if you're in an environment that is like noisy, then your brain is going to, like, it's really hard to, to focus. Right. So you can train it uh, a few times or you, sometimes there's, thoughts that are easier to train than others. For example, I found that thinking about tapping my right foot was easier than thinking about pushing something in space because okay. my right foot, like I know where my foot is and I can, I know the sensation of like tapping it on the floor so I can think it's like as if I was trying to move my foot, but without doing it. <laughs> like, I, yeah. I, I, I think like I, I can, I'm following you. I get this. I, it... Yeah. Uh, whereas pushing, it's like, I don't know. I would want to have more feedback. I mean, it's mm. weird. Uh, you can try different things, but I think there's there's a list of different thoughts. And then if you don't like the thoughts that are on the list, you can have access to raw data to train your own um, your own algorithms and your own stuff. But then you have to deal with you have to do the whole calculation um, yourself. You have to um, use the data and pass it through certain filters. So you have to know, uh, because the data is very noisy when you just get it um, raw, and then you have to know about digital signal processing, uh, which is a different <laughs> thing. I, I was looking into that over the weekend and I was like, I, I was so frustrated at myself because <laughs> I, I want, there's something that I'm building and I need more knowledge about digital mm. signal processing to get there. And I was like, why don't I know this already? <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's interesting. So if you don't like the thoughts that um, are predefined as the ones that are easier to train, you can, you can, if you want access raw data and do the whole calculation and machine learning yourself, which is cool because in other devices that I tried before, uh, they didn't give you access to raw data unless you paid uh, like a monthly um, oh yeah yeah but it's like i'm not a researcher so i use it when i have the time it's not worth like it's not worthy for me to to actually pay for this um so i could only um i couldn't play with the raw data and that was so it's kind of like limited but yeah um, yeah well i mean yeah. this so this just sounds like amazing i i'm 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 so excited about like just so many possibilities here like you you mentioned at one point you said that uh you, you could look for a state of calm Right. Yeah. And I'm just imagining that I hook up my computer to where I have mm -hmm. to put on this device and then it will only let me open Twitter if I'm calm. <laughs> <laughs> like anti anti shit posting device. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I think they I think they worked on on something that um, if it detects that you're focused enough, then it switches off your notifications so you don't get disturbed while you're in oh. a state of focus. So I think there is a VS Code extension. Uh, I didn't try it, but I think they have a few, they're looking into um, what can you do with the state of calm and focus? Cause that you don't need any training at all. Um, the state of calm and focus is more, you're looking at the, the brain waves and there's probably more, I don't know, probably more like the, the activity of the brain waves in general is probably more spiky uh, if you're, focused and if it's calm it's probably like more quiet or something so yeah. you can detect that easily without training whereas thought is more personal um so yeah with at least with the state of calm or focus i think they were doing stuff around like picking music based on your um state of mind so if you're 
calm, then you can, you know, play some music that's more um, ambient. Mm. And if you're, uh, I mean, you could really do what you want. That's the, that's the point. It's like once you get access to the data, then you can um, build whatever you want with it. And in JavaScript, yay! Yeah, that's that's but super fun. Of, okay, I mean, yeah. so I'm like, I'm ready. I wanna I wanna see this thing okay. in action. Like this is this is so cool. Um, and I, I would love to to like let's let's do something, right? So uh, <laughs> what what uh, where where should we start? What should I do first? Okay, so what I um, I just put together a basic app to start with because okay. uh, you to be able to use uh, the headset and have access to the data, you need to log in. So for privacy uh, reasons, they want people to um, only be access only have access to the data if you're logged in into your account because in other headsets that I used, uh, it transmitted the data via Bluetooth to the computer and anybody could just. Um, if you listen to Bluetooth devices around you, you could be listening to my brain data. Uh, not that you would do anything with it, uh, but it's not very like private. So right. for this one, I just set up the uh, login form and stuff like that. So we wouldn't have to go through that. That's why on the screen on the right, you just see a page that says boop, uh, just because it, I just checked that I was um, logged in. So as it's primarily, um, so the founders of the company wanted to make a headset where the focus was on developers to build things. Mm -hmm. So they, um, so the main, the API is available in a JavaScript and you can do stuff on the web with React or uh, in Node as well. So as JavaScript is everywhere now, you could either do websites or stuff with um, Arduino or um, Electron, like VS Code extensions and things like that. So to start, I thought that we could look at how to hook up the um, Calm API to do something on the screen with the state of Calm. OK. Um, okay. So as I shared on Live Share, I don't know, can you, so you can, you can access the files as well, or you can only type on the, on the file that I focus. Um, no, it looks like I can get anywhere. So I just opened up app.js. Oh, OK, I think I have to, oh, OK. You'll just have to tell me where you are, because I'll have to go as well for it to be okay. on the screen. OK, cool. Um, so here, if you um, scroll down a little bit, the main state of the app, actually, I have to scroll down. Um, we're just doing the, the loading. Uh, I'm just going to talk through the, through the code a little bit. So there's a few um, use effect hooks um, that check if there is a device ID. And that's the whole um, logging part. Uh, so here, if there's a, a user and if I logged in, then we navigate to the slash com route that shows the, the com page, and we're going to implement it later. Uh, and here, if there's a device ID, then we set, we initialize a, a notion and we, you know, um, set it on the state so that we can pass it to the different components so that we are sure that on every page that we visit, we have access to the user and um, the notion to have access to the data. Uh, yeah, so that's just like basic setup stuff. Um, here, uh, we have the few routes that we have. So we have the login that I already did. And if something goes wrong, I have a uh, log out because I think that's what happened last time when we tried to set up and I couldn't log out. I didn't have the logout route anyway. Uh, okay. so that was my fault. But, uh, so here we have the calm component. Um, and at the moment that's just boop and we're going to go and implement it now. So we passed it the notion prop that's like the reference to the headset and the user. So if we just go to pages and we enter in the calm file, this calm is where file. we're going to write some code. Yes. Uh, so let me look at what I have. Um, I cheated a little bit. I have another on my other computer. I have the code that I want you to write. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what I, the demo that I wanted to build for this, was using uh, React 3 Fiber. Um, so I don't know if you've used it before, but it's um, kind of using 3.js, but in React, so to do some 3D. And uh, the results that I want to get to at the end is there's going to be some bubbles moving on the screen. And when I wear the headset, I want, them, I want the motion to slow down with uh, if I manage to calm down. Okay. Uh, so at the top of the file, I required a few things that I need for that. but um, so the first thing that we can do is uh, inside, so before the return, 
-hmm. we can probably use uh, the use state um, hook to set the state of calm. So you can have const like calm and set calm uh, and use state 10. We're just going to use like a random value um, to start with. Yeah. Okay. And then after that, you can have a use effect hook where uh, we're going to start our subscription to the calm um, event. So inside there, um, you can define a variable that's actually, um, Ooh, I didn't write it like that. But yeah, I didn't pass calm inside the use effect, but let's see what happens. Well, so, I, I mean, I can leave it out. I, I... Uh, yeah, but I mean, maybe because I, what I passed is the user and notion. Uh, oh yeah. That's... Oh yes. I think, yeah, you need to pass in a uh, notion mainly. Um, but yeah. So inside there, we can declare a variable that you can call how I called it subscription, but you can call it however you want. And um, here you have to write notion dot calm that you after with brackets. Okay. Cool. Yep. And then dot subscribe. Dot subscribe. Yep. And you are gonna have uh, a callback with calm or calm or whatever you want to call it. Really. Oh wait, let me just open the window a bit more. I zoomed too much. And uh, inside uh, there. Wait, I have to do something. Because this is going to get weird, right? Um, is it going to get weird? Well, because oh, we've got yes, the variables yes, in different scopes. Yes, you're right. Um, um, we'll, we'll call it sub, and then we'll do something with it in here. Yes, you're right. Actually, yeah, I called it differently after. Um, so here, um, you have to access the probability. So you can do sub dot probability, and usually that comes back as a number between um, zero and one for the probability of you being calm. So what I usually do is I multiply it by a thousand because I want to pass it later into my animation. And if it's just 0 0.1, we won't see anything happening. Okay. Uh, so you can store that into a variable. And do you want me to call this something? Uh, I called it calm score, but like naming things is hard. Um, <laughs> and then I set that to the state. So set calm, calm score. Um, and inside the return, what we're going to do is I cheated as well. And if you go to the test.js file inside the pages folder, uh, if you could just copy what's, uh, just the first in, inside the brackets, cause the other ones it's for later. Um, that's the animation for, um, yeah. So if you just copy this. yep until here and you put it into the return of the calm JS file instead of boop. So what this does, um, it uses um, one of the classic example of React 3 Fiber um, to like have a canvas where it sets a few properties. And we have then an ambient light, uh, a point light, and swarm uh, is already built. It's you, If you want to have a look at it, it's in the components folder, um, swarm.js. And uh, I did not build that. Myself, just so you know, uh, it's part of the dim, like the um, some of the examples of React Three Fiber. Okay. And um, we pass into into it um, the the data that we get back from the headset. So um, I don't. I think. Yeah, okay, I'm just looking at the stream to make sure that you see. Um, so in the data here, uh, all I'm doing is that the um, speed. Uh, property like the speed variable here. I'm dividing it by data because before, so the normal animation oh. was divided by 200. Yeah, and, yeah. So, but you could do whatever. You could uh, apply it to the x factor. Oh, x factor. Anyway, so uh, you <laughs> <laughs> you could apply it to um, to whatever you want. If you wanted, you could create more bubbles when you're calm or whatever. Uh, so but I just wanted it to be. Yes. So, so just to kind of talk through the way I understand this code, what's going to happen yes. here is the calmer you are, the slower yes. everything's going to move on screen. That's the goal. Okay. Now, is it going to happen? I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> let's pretend that it will. Um, so yeah, so if we just go back to, I mean, if you're interested, I can push the code later if you want to have more of a look, because like all of that, I definitely will not explain all of the things that are happening with the particles here. Because oh yeah, I when we get like when yeah. we get into math functions, I am immediately like, mm, yeah. I trust you. <laughs> we got more work to do. So uh, 
<laughs> if, we, if we go back to the com.js, we can see that when we um, when we render the swarm component, we pass uh, the data that we pass is um, com that we set in our state before, and yes. count is the number of bubbles that will be on the screen. Okay. So I just turned on the device. I might have to wait a little bit because it has to. Let me just. You probably will see that, which is fine. Okay, so here is, can you see that on the screen? Yeah, I think it's coming. Mm -hmm. So here is the console that you have access to when you have a device. And you can see on the left here that it's starting the OS. So okay. you just have to wait a little bit for it to start and then it will give me a, like a um, battery percentage and stuff like that. Okay. So if we just look at the training, for example, uh, I trained a few different things, but my my right foot is the best. Uh, and okay, I have to wait. I mean, maybe I can show you later. Um, but you have access to a few different things that you can do in the console if you don't want to build your own applications. You have an activity log that here looks empty because I didn't have the device at the time. Mm -hmm. um, but then you have um, you can have access to the signal quality. And if you go to the brainwaves type, you can actually have a visualization of the brainwaves live or the frequency or the PSD symmetry, but I forgot what that is. So let's not talk about it. <laughs> uh, yes. So uh, I, a couple quick things while we're while we're waiting for this to start up. Um, first of all, thank you very much, uh, Fada Wolf, for the subscription. Really, really appreciate that. And uh, enjoy the new emotes. Uh, we have a couple new emotes. We have a rubber corgi in there, which I am just, just absolutely pleased to punch about. Uh, we've also got the stream blitz logo which is the sound effects that aren't working today for some reason um oh no yeah, there they go they're that working look at them go oh but i can't <laughs> because i have my oh wait okay i see the video but i put the sound down because otherwise it would be like sure 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 you hackers you there you we dirty go hackers they're back i don't know why i wasn't working but they're working now um, also, there was a question. What are we doing here? We are doing literal mind control. So what uh, what Charlie just put on is a uh, a hardware device that has the what was it electrodes that um, mm -hmm. that are now at different points around her skull that are reading her thoughts. Um, and did it just finish firing up? Yes, I have it on switch. I'm excellent. Warming it up, you know. <laughs> so now we get the exciting part where we literally get to look inside of Charlie's head. <laughs> well, I don't know if there's much happening right now, but uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, all right. I'm going to say what I hope is going to happen, and then we'll see. So when I when I'm going to run yarn start. It's going to update the page and we should not see boop anymore. We should see some bubbles and they're going to move because the default state is 10. So they're going to move. But what I want is to be, to try to calm down and uh, see the bubbles slow down. If they don't, then it's, uh, well, we'll see. Oh, actually, I just realized uh, if you go to line 11, you have to call calm. So you have to pass in the... You have to. Um, oh, yeah. like like this. That's the sign for yes. <laughs> the parents of these. Anyway, <laughs> this, this uh, one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So I saved that, um, and now so if I just uh, do yarn start, and I have my oh not this one. Okay. So that should update that. I can hide this. So if there's no error, I should see bubbles. And. Oh no. Okay. I broke it. All right. Um, so, I think we don't have the notion. Okay. So notion should have gone into calm and in my code here. So app JS. Here's notion. We have a notion because it says, let me just go back. Cannot read property calm of no. And the one we're trying to access is on the notion. So, oh, I know why, because we're in use effect. And I think the first time you load, there's no, um, okay. So what we have to do is, can you write if there's no user or new or no notion? So yeah, or no notion, uh, just return. Yes. Okay. Okay. I'm going to save that. Let's see what happens. I should see some bubble. Okay. So I have bubbles. All right. And I don't have bubbles anymore. Oh, okay. So it got, I think there's an issue with, um, 
the probability. So I don't know if I calculated right. What I did before was multiply by a thousand, but let me just check quickly. There is no error. So I think the issue is. Should we console log it or something? Yes. Do you mind logging the com score? Do you want it in the use effect? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's just do that. I want to see if, if I get it because this morning I tried and I had an issue with it returning zero. And oh, okay. So there is a, so it loads and then it's zero. Okay. Why? Maybe because I'm not calm at all. <laughs> so it's like, it's like zero calm. Um, I had an issue this morning as well. So if it doesn't work, we can move on to the rest. But um, what we can do, can you console log sub pretty please? Yes. Instead of com score. Because sub is our object with everything uh, related to, OK. So let's have a look quickly. That's what I thought. Okay, so this morning I had the same issue. And can you change com to uh, focus? So on when we call on Notion, instead of calling com, do you mind calling focus? So that's the other API. So if you want focus instead of com, you can just call it like that. Okay. And I want to see if it, okay, so the problem is the same. All right. So. Let me think a second. I had issues this morning as well. So a way that I could check is check here. Yeah, I get nothing. So. And so does that mean that it's not reading it from the for, hardware? Um, it means that for the com, it's not getting it. But what we can do is move on to the thought uh, training because this, I mean, not training, but the thought prediction, because okay. I did it this morning and that worked um, better. So usually what would happen is that you would get, um, oh, that's really small, but um, yeah. what you I would mean, get we can, is- We can hard code this, right? So if I take like a 0 0.5 and just yeah. always return, oh wait, yes. no, so actually we would just set it to like 500 because that would be the times yeah. a thousand. Yeah, so if you wanted to do that, it should slow it down. Or it should have, yeah, that, that's what I wanted at the end. Yay, look, it does. <laughs> we just did it too hard code. Um, yeah, so usually uh, it goes back, it comes back. Um, and maybe that's the subscription that I didn't do properly, but um, I had issues with that particular subscription this morning as well. So the Calm API, I had some problems, but the um, thought one, the mm -hmm. yeah, the thought one was worked better. So let's try that. And if it doesn't, then it's like full on a problem. But um, <laughs> yeah, but let's let's move on. Okay. So usually this is what should happen. You should get a probability that's coming back. And the higher it is, the more calm you are. Mm -hmm. If it goes back as zero point two, then you're not calm at all. Um, okay, I got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, also, thank you for the raid, Visual Studio. Like, not who I expected to show up, but what's up? Glad you're here. Good to see you. Um, what were y'all working on today? Uh, also, thank you for the bits, Floor and Pop. Appreciate it. Um, all right. So, if I want to do the thoughts, yes. Uh, so, what? Um, so, we're going to create another file for that. Um, so, in the just to be able to like keep all our samples if people want them after. Um, so in the pages folder, can okay. you, uh, you probably can't create because it's my laptop. I um, might, I might be able to, let's see. <gasps> can I can. Weird. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm just going to remove the headset and just make sure it's still charged. But, um, so what they call it is, um, Kinesis. So you can call the file however you want, if you want, but the API is going to be called Kinesis. Um, okay. I'm just trying to get my cable to eat. Um, so, yeah, you created. Okay. So inside the um, Kinesis folder that we have here, um, what we're going to do, it's going to be very similar. Uh, okay. We're going to have a state that you can, I called it thought and set thought, but you can, or however you want, brain set brain or whatever. <laughs> um, 
and a use effect as well. Yes. Okay. So it's, it's going to be very, very similar. Thought uh, set thought. Yeah, um, and use state zero. And then our um, use effect. Yes. And am I going to pass in uh, notion and user again? Uh, in uh, the yes, inside there. Yep. Okay. Yep. And then in the use effect, we need the same if statement that checks if there's a user or a notion. And we return if there's not. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, we have another uh, subscription, so you can call it however you want. Uh, um, actually, you don't actually need to. <laughs> we, I, I think if we were like going to ship this to production, we would need to return a function that would like unsubscribe. Yes, um, that's right. I have it in my in my code samples, but we don't actually need to unsubscribe. So I'm thinking, I mean, we. Only yes, if it like unmounts, need... right? Yeah. So what we can do, because um, as we're gonna hook that um, component to just another route, I don't know if it unsubscribes you by default. Yes, probably because it's not. Okay, let's just add the unsubscribe just in case. Okay. So <laughs> you can create um, a variable. Um, yeah, and it's we're gonna write notion dot kinesis, and inside we're gonna pass it a string that oh. says right foot because I want to detect the right foot. And F with a capital letter. F with a capital letter. Yes. And, and then, then dot, yeah. Yay. OK. And we, OK. Sorry, and, I'm getting uh, ahead of myself here. Go for it. Um, and then for this, would it just be like subscription dot? And subscribe, yeah. Subscribe. OK. Yes. Um, so and inside the subscription of the kinesis, we have um, an intent. So you should, yeah. And you, I just want to console intent for now because there's two ways to access thoughts is either you can use kinesis or predictions. And I just forgot the one I want to use. So let's just, yeah, console intent for now. Uh, but now it means that we need to go inside. Oh, yeah, we need to write on something. So <laughs> if you go back to the test.js file, Oh, we, you can return that if you want. Yeah, we can. Oh, that. oh, yeah. Sorry, I figured since we were just console logging, I could put a, a nothing yeah. out there. But yeah, if you want to do, do you want me to switch it out? Um. Okay. First, let's go to the app.js because we need to. Uh, we're gonna add that component to a route. So the same way that we did calm that has the path slash calm. Uh, we want to do the same with. Where are you? So I'm up at the top. I just imported oh, yeah. Kinesis. <laughs> And then um, yeah. I'll head then, down to. So below calm. Yeah, line 54. Yep. So kinesis. Yep. And then path uh, kinesis. And then just at the a bit at the top in, on line 18. Yeah, just change that to slash kinesis. Yeah. And if okay. we save, that should automatically. I, uh, I broke it. You'll ha I, I forgot to save kinesis first. So you'll just have to refresh the page. Oh. Oh, yeah, okay, cool. Well, it should. Ooh. Oh, what? Um, Kinesis. Oh, 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 I screwed it up because you're doing a named import, and I was oh, not yeah. doing that. So let me just do that. Mm -hmm. OK. That should work now. Now, cool, OK. But uh, what we want, so the first thing here, what was I doing? Oh, yeah. So um, if you go to test.js, um, there's the function box and then the thing that you have to render. Um, so what I wanted to do for that um, demo was having just a normal um, cube. And then if I think about my right, put my right foot, it should um, push it in space. So it should like go further. Okay. Um, so what we want is we want to render the canvas here with our box and our lights. And the box is actually the function that you're copying here. OK, so I'll so get that, this function in. Um, and then I think I put it outside, but we'll see. Um, I don't no. know. Why aren't you uncommenting? There it goes. OK, and, and then I'm going to uh, render. Yes. OK. Yeah, instead of, yeah, OK. 
So Oops. yeah, there's just a few little. All right, let auto formatting do its thing. All yeah. good. Okay, so, and did, it, did it console log for us? Oh, we didn't. Uh, we need use ref and we need a few imports. So we need use ref, use frame, and canvas from three um, React three fiber. Let me put the headset back on. Uh, so Dan is asking about uh, live co live collab in VS Code. This is we're using a feature right now called um, VS Code Live Share. So basically, we both installed an extension, and then Charlie said she wanted to share her session and sent me a link, which let me authenticate. Um, and so now that I'm authenticated, I am able to use her computer, or I'm not not using her computer. I, I have a, a VS Code <laughs> editor open that is uh, pulling files from her system. And when I edit those, they update on her machine in real time. So basically, I'm, I'm editing her local files in this VS Code share. It's really cool, too, because it'll share like terminals um, and, and a couple other things as well. Uh, if you're running a local host, like I can pull up the local host on my machine. It's really, really fancy stuff. Like it's a, it's a, a very helpful feature for like remote teams and, and just being able to do some good. Uh... Oh, yeah. Leslie's saying in the chat, like it's awesome for pairing. Absolutely. Like it's super Leslie! cool. Hello. <laughs> um, OK, so we need to fix a few different things. And also, if anybody has more questions, feel free because uh, the device turned off because it was a bit hot. So I need to wait a few minutes for it to cool down and then I can turn it back on. <laughs> Um, that's one of the, in the version of the, um, Oh, I missed some pieces. Headset. Hmm? I missed yes. some pieces. So I need to use ref. Yes. And, uh, use frame, which I think is going to be, let me just look at use frame is what is use frame. Where does that come from? Let me, um, use frame is from react three fiber. Okay and canvas as well canvas mm -hmm. do yeah. i need to bring in um 3js uh i know i think it should be all in okay um all right so the device is still a bit hot so what i was thinking okay so we have the cube but now well there's no thought coming because the device is turned off uh but as i wanted to do two demos with the thought i thought we could go and build the second one and I think by the time it's a bit less hot now. So by the time we do the, we build the second one, we'll be able to test both um, okay. at the same time. So the, cause in that, uh, for that experiment, I, I just want to show that if you subscribe to one thought, you can create whatever experiment you want. So in this case, I want to be able to um, push the cube in space. And by the way, at the moment, we're just consolidating intent. Mm -hmm. So ah, I can see my, thing uh, but we're not using that to impact the position of the box so we also right. need to actually do that and i think the what you can access on intent is um dot probability but i'm i'll have to see once we're uh once we're actually doing it but um if it is hmm. let's write intent dot probability it's either probability or something else, but, um, and we can set that to the is, is it not? Oh, that's right, because we don't have it turned on right now. Um, yeah. So and, yeah. do we need to multiply and, that by anything? Um, either, uh, no, because um, I don't know if you ever did um, 3JS before, but I think when you do rotation, you don't want it to be 500 because it would be like super fast. Uh, uh, yeah, usually okay, in okay. the rotations, you do like, 0 0.05 or something uh but what we want is if the, the probability is over 0 0.9 so if like it's quite confident that i did think right foot then um set the the stake oh okay so so, so i should actually wait so this is where i'm gonna get um this is where i might be because there's two, there's two things. There's either you can call the Kinesis API, mm -hmm. which I think might only be triggered by itself if it's over 0 0.9. So either we can call directly set thought here when we get an event, because it means that the headset has uh, detected that we really thought about my right foot. So it just, it just triggers once. 
or we have access to the probability, but that might be coming from the predictions um, API. So I might not make sense here because um, let's just, I don't think, okay. I don't think you'll have access to a probability property on intent because I think the kinesis only will send you, uh, it will only trigger if it detected something. So we can call set foot here directly, but Oh yes, so we set thought to uh, whatever state we did de we declared at the top. So um, what am I saying? I don't actually know anymore. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm confused in my own code sample. How did I do it? I mean, we can we can go step by step and like log stuff out too. So once we oh sorry, I just. Um, it's because I'm confused with the APIs. We can, uh, instead of using use state zero, we can say use state uh, false. So at first I'm not okay. thinking about my right. And then we set thought to true. And inside the box, we can say if the thought is true, then change the um, Z position. Does that make sense? Uh, okay, so help me get through the subscription part. So I get back an intent. <laughs> And the in uh, is the intent going to be a, a true false? Uh, it will not, but I don't think at that moment we care about the properties inside the intent object. What we care is that it got triggered. Uh, and if it got triggered, it means uh, we can just, yeah, we can set for okay. true. So okay. that then in our box function, um, it, we can say that if uh, thought is true, Actually, this is where I had inside use frame. I had if active, uh, but actually it should be if thought because of the way we called the variable. Oh wait, I broke something. Okay, so wh which line am I going to? Uh, 23. 23, if yeah. active. Oh, so active, I would I would set that to thought? Yeah, I think it's just because I, I called it differently in, in before. Yes, okay. and what happens here is that if we detected that this is true, then uh, the Z position, I'm minusing it, so I'm pushing it further um, in space. So so basically what we should see is when you think about your right foot, it will make the box smaller. <laughs> yes, that's a way to say it like this. <laughs> when I think about my right foot, because I think about my right foot all the time. Um, <laughs> All right, let, let's just, um, I'm going to turn it back on because it's a bit less warm. Okay. In um, So I think in my version of the headset, I don't get a state when the battery gets too hot. So sometimes it turns off and uh, I can feel it on the headset if I put my hand, but I don't actually get a notification. And I think in their new, uh, in uh, they're working on you getting some kind of notification if it gets too, um, too hot. So you can know in advance if something, if you need to like, um, pause for a bit. Um, gotcha. But I think that might take a minute. So let's check if we have any. Okay, so we don't have any error. There is a cube. Just looking at the code quickly. Uh, if ever the Kinesis API is not the right one to use here, we'll be able to change it to dot predictions. Okay. But um, I get confused about the two. I forgot which one is um, better, but I think Kinesis gives you an event when the headset thinks that it um, that it's over 0 0.9, so if it's sure. Whereas the predictions API gives you, it sends you back notifications all the time, but you can have a probability of 0 0.2. So it's kind of for you to, if you want to set your own threshold, you can use the predictions. Uh, otherwise, Kinesis is the good one. OK, so it's starting the OS. Um, what I wanted to do as well, the second demo that I wanted to show with the thought was to um, uh, scroll down on a page when I think about my right foot, because mm. uh, you can do that kind of experience as well. And that's more useful than just having a, a cube in space, you know. Well, uh, and I, and I think like, that's, that's the part that actually takes this from being like, hey, this is like fun, right, to being super practical. Because if you think about somebody who's like quadriplegic, if we can get these types of devices to be like stable and, and get these hooked into web APIs, that opens up the entire internet to somebody who doesn't even have the use of their, their hands or feet, which is really fascinating. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. And at the moment, um, 
one of the thing is that it can, uh, I think, so I don't know, I don't know about the latest um, OS updates, but in the one that I have um, at the moment, uh, they can only really uh, see the difference between your normal state and the thought that you trained. But in the future, they want to be able to have a better detection of multiple thought that you trained. So you could have one that scrolls down and one that scrolls up. So you can yeah. have like, more, whereas at the moment, what I could do mostly is like one. So if I, if it doesn't detect that I'm thinking, then it would like to do uh, nothing, but it, it would just scroll down if I think about certain stuff. But, um, okay. So there's an issue here where I should be getting, uh, I don't have any error, right? So. Can we log something inside the subscribe? Just so I thought if we get if we get in it. Okay. Please. Let's sub yeah, we'll subscribe. Just hello, boop, uh, whatever. Let's just log whatever. If... Let's just log whatever it gives us, because maybe it's given us something that uh intent. Intent. Oh, intent. Because I wonder, I don't think that, ooh. Oh, yeah, it's not even getting to the. So, OK, because I'm not is assigned a value I'm but never just, used. I think it's just me, because I'm not focusing on the right foot. All right, let me try a second to focus. Otherwise, we can go to the predictions API. But OK, wait. It's going to be quiet and very awkward. but. Um, Okay, no. So <laughs> uh, can we instead use, so if you create a new variable um, that we set to whatever you want. Uh, in, in the subscription? Uh, outside, we're gonna, we're gonna subscribe to the, so we can comment out the Kinesis one. Yeah. And we're gonna subscribe to predictions, so. Yeah, notion dot predictions, and we pass in right foot as well. Yep, we call subscribe, uh, and we get yeah we can. Do or that. is it an intent and again? Yeah, uh, it's whatever you you want to call it. But um, then we can we log that because if if that doesn't give me anything, that we we miss something somewhere else, which is okay. weird. So let's give it a shot. Okay. What? Can I, let me. That is like. Let's make sure that it's getting to the. Yeah, okay. okay, so it is getting into that use effect, but the predictions aren't firing. But uh, like, it's the same. Oh, we get, we get something. Okay, hey, cool. Look at it go. All right. Oh, oh, look at the cube. It's gone. Bye bye. Uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so so I picked so we had we were in the wrong. So that's the thing. What I said when if you use the predictions um, API, you're gonna get events all the time, and you have to decide the probability that you want. Whereas if you use Kinesis, um, it's gonna send you uh, only the event when it thinks that you thought um, enough. Okay. Um, so that you have more confidence when you use the Kinesis because um, you don't just get. Uh, like events fired, um, but there was just a bit of a delay. Can we try to comment out to to comment that out the predictions and put back in the kinesis? Maybe it's just that I didn't focus enough, so we can try again. I, uh, yeah, okay. Let me just try. So. Well, it's, it's interesting too, because it was like, Oh, look, look, Ooh, I did it. I did it. Did you see, did you see, did you see? Okay. Oh, that's amazing. That is oh, amazing. Oh, Oof, that's it. I've done enough thank you for today. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> oh, oh that's goodness. so cool. That was. Oh, uh, but, um, uh, okay, so what we can do? Uh, I'm just going to turn it off just so it doesn't get too warm. But uh, do are you interested in trying to create the scrolly one to see sure. uh, yeah. or not? I'm I'm interested in everything. That was that was amazing. All right. Um, it's recorded, right? It's on the internet forever. I did it. It is. It's, it's yeah. That's it. This is it's permanent. It's in the it's in the internet hall of records. <laughs> oh my god! I was like, something needs to work, right? I mean, like that would be embarrassing. Um, okay. So what we can do then is that as we're using the same uh, Kinesis API, we can copy the same code, create a new component that we can call like scroll or whatever. I just want to make sure that we create different pages. You don't have to, but just for later if I push that code. Um, so yes. OK. I don't even need to guide you anymore. You're, you're <laughs> a neurotech. Specialist. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> um, okay, so I have this, but these look. That yeah, looks so like we can, what we would want, yeah, we right? Can, we can, okay, but instead of uh, using the whole React three fiber, uh, we can use whatever uh, lorem ipsum that you want to use, and we can, you know, the the usual uh, window dot scroll by a certain amount of pixels and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so we can, okay. um, yeah, we can put whatever lorem ipsum content that you Chat, want. Chat, what's your favorite lorem ipsum? Chuck Norris, no. The chat does not like lorem ipsum. <laughs> yeah, they got nothing. This is the one that I usually go to because it makes me smile. Did you um, think too hard as well? Is it? <laughs> Oh, Ooh, gold bloom Ipsum. All right. Yes. Oh, there's a cat Ipsum. That's cool. Jeffsum. <gasps> Pirate. Jeez. Okay, let's do it. Oh, oh yeah, I remember. I love the gradient. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's uh let's let's do this. I have to copy it quite a few times. All right. So oh, I just need more paragraphs then. Let's do Let's do 25 paragraphs of that Jeffness. Oh, get out of here. There we go. That is a that is a lot of Jeff Goldblum. Okay. Um, so then back in here, I'm going to take all of this code and oops, paste it. Okay. Then See how fast I can do all of this. Uh, we'll just do oh, it like this. Oh, this is everything. Like the, you know, the quote about the scientist from Jurassic Park? Well, <laughs> yeah. Anyway. <laughs> OK, so I think, I think now we've got all of those paragraphs, and then I can choose all of the empty ones and get rid of them. And I believe that should work. Yeah, it looks like you have a lot. So now instead of in our subscription, instead of, um, I mean, we could keep set thought, but we need, um, you know, window dot, um, window dot, line, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, either we, yeah, we can put it in there. Um, and the top in my in what I tried, I uh, oh, can you do it like that? I don't I did, know. Um, so it's scroll by. Scroll by. That yeah, was. and then you open was... a bracket, and then you have a squiggly bracket, and then, <laughs> how do you call that? Squiggly? I don't know. I, I uh, always so... call it a curly brace, but a squiggly bracket. Oh, yeah. is... <laughs> I've I've also seen them referred to as curly boys, which which makes me smile. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever, whatever works. Uh, and then uh, you have to pass the top. I mean, you just write top and then column. Uh, I write 200, so by 200 pixels. Um, top 200? Yeah. And then okay. left zero. I don't know if you need to pass it, but I pass it anyway. And then behavior, smooth. <laughs> It doesn't smooth. have to be smooth, but it's better. It's better when it's smooth. Okay. Okay. So, so then I can get rid of. So we we don't need to really keep track of state anymore because now we're just yeah. moving the. Okay. Yeah. 
remove all the hooks. Oh no, not the use effect though. Okay. So I don't um, need React three fiber anymore. I yeah. don't need state, and I don't mm -hmm. need a ref. We can just do that. And we can remove the console bug as well. We okay. don't. We don't need. All right. Hopefully it's gonna work again. But I should be able to scroll if I think about my right foot. All right. So then so, I'm going to. Oh yes, I forgot. Ah. Uh, pull this remember? in. We'll make this one into scroll, right. and we'll bring the scroller in. You're a pro. All right. I oh, believe it, it, this is going to work. First try. Here we go. One take, Dave. Wait, wait. You need to move. You need to change line um, six, seven. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> I was so close. All right. OK. It's going. It already did it. Okay. Yeah, but wait, wait. I'm trying again. Mm. Did you see? <laughs> it's amazing. <Those> emotions. <laughs> so good. <sighs> I'm exhausted. Okay. So, uh, all right. So, Holy okay. So we did the thought. So we had an work? issue with the com. Uh, not quite sure what happened there. It might be just that I wasn't calm, so I didn't trigger it. Actually, that's probably the case. Um, we, but what do I you want to go back and try it? We could. I mean, I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but we could we can. Well, the file is there. Um, so I think I just changed actually, the navigate back, right? Yes. And the thing is that I don't, it might be, oh, we need to move the, because um, we hard coded here on line 14. We did. So it might be only if I'm, the, my calm is over 0. Point, oh yeah, but there's a weird thing here. Oh mm. yeah, okay. OK, no, I don't think I'll have the time to debug it. So let's not do that. But what I wanted to talk about is, are you, um, OK, there's two things I want to, so because you're, you're supposed to finish in like 20 minutes, right? Yes. OK, so I'm going to give you a choice. Either we can talk quickly about how to get uh, a raw data. Um, I'm not going to do anything with it, but we can write the code for it and see it in the, in the console. Or we can go in node land and write the thought thing with in node and i have something that i built that i have not shared and i want you to like write the code and then i'll show you what it's supposed to do Why? but i just sold it i just like tried to convince you that I, yeah i can't i can't, I can't imagine that really we're not gonna here. do that one so <laughs> they said, you want a cool one or do you want <laughs> all right um so in my folder at the top i have a, actually Ah, oh, damn it, I already wrote the code, actually. But uh, OK, let's walk through. I forgot to comment it out. If you go into the node folder, do not show, actually, it's not you. I should not show my end file, because this is what my password is. But um, so here, I what I have is, um, this is the, I'm going to go through the code. Let me check my, hmm, it's not too hard. Um, so if you want to do something in node, the code is going to look very, um, I mean, kind of similar. Um, so you have to require the Neurocity Notion um, package. And then as you have to log in, you can put your um, email, password, and uh, device ID into an end file that you can then um, require. And what we're going to do here is we're going to use robot.js. Have you used robot.js before? I, I've heard of it, but I can't remember. Like I feel like I tried something with it, but I can't remember what it does. OK, so it allows you to control some of your computer stuff with JavaScript, oh, so your cool. mouse or your keyboard. Uh, so you can type certain letters or move your mouse uh, to a certain position uh, in Node.js. Um, okay. mm -hmm. So here, uh, I, yeah, I wrote a comment that you have to use Node v10, because when I tried this morning, I was getting the weird error that said um, segmentation fault. Mm. It's a thing I've seen in Node before, and I actually don't know why that, yeah that's i feel like that's a what what is a seg faults it's like a thing that i read about once and then i was like oh that'll never apply to me and it <laughs> yeah. let me just cuz I, I just don't want it to keep pulling data in case it's getting hot um okay so we're back uh, in the code so here we just have we instantiate a notion with a device id and inside your uh, main 
function, you have to run the logging and you can have like an error if uh, you're not logging properly. I just have a log um, that says logged in just to make sure in my terminal that I see. And here it's the Kinesis and it's the same as we had, it's the same code as we had in the front end. Um, okay. We use Kinesis, you pass the thought that you trained and you subscribe to it. And when you, you get an intent, when it thinks that you're thought about it enough. Uh, I did some weird thing here. Uh, I, because I don't think you need to par to stringify and then parse, but I had issue with accessing certain properties. Uh, I think you can just do intent dot confidence or dot probability. There was some, I just built this this morning, by the way, because mm -hmm. I had an idea and I was like, I need to do it. And then there's this amazing magic number, uh, <laughs> that I use being like that amount of confidence, 0 0.999997. Anyway, um, usually I wouldn't want to do that, but I had some, uh, like I, I would just want to trigger something when there's an intent, but I was, you can see here that I was experimenting with weird stuff. Uh, and here, if you want more stuff, you can have the same predictions. But what I want to do is when I focus about uh, right foot, I want to press the space bar. Okay. And the reason why I want to do this uh, is because I'm just going to run my, uh, actually. Oh, oh my God. So I want to, Go offline, and I want to play the dino game with my brain. So, oh my god, is that gonna work? Wait, I don't know. I might wait before we do. I want to log what I get back because that was this morning and. Now I'm tired, so maybe that's too high. Uh, just, <laughs> let's just uh, let's just remove. Actually, I should let you write type, but just that. Okay, so I just want to see what um, do I get something even? Actually, wait, sorry, that's a bit small. Okay. Oh yeah, so there I you go. Get, I do get some number. Okay, so nine 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 five. Fine. <laughs> Not nine 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 seven. Uh, so that was too high. So what I can do. I'm going to say a five here. Uh, this is terrible high key code. You can see that I was not prepared to for this, but um, okay. So I have my confidence and I put it over a, th a certain threshold and I want to key tap space. Okay. Okay. I launch, I go. No. I think, right. oh, 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 no. I, th I think Wait, you okay, had maybe. your, I, I think you had one extra nine in there. So yeah. your probability yeah. is really <laughs> well, high. Okay, let's try again, let's try. Wait, well, that's, I disconnected, so, okay. So, usually you shouldn't have to like do that. I should just train it more because that's like a magic number. It shouldn't be like that. Okay, let's try again. I'm thinking too much because I want to jump. Jump, jump, jump. <laughs> okay, wait, wait. <laughs> oh no! <gasps> <gasps> oh, okay. Well, I got one. That is amazing. I like this is amazing. <laughs> this is so cool. And I could go on forever, but like, wait, I'm gonna try and get two. No. <laughs> All right, I'm terrible at this game. I'm even worse. I than love it. Anyway. This is so much fun. Ah, I did it better this morning. I got like three, I think. <laughs> I mean, you're you're definitely like playing this on hard mode. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Maybe. I, okay. One more time. Okay, but I want to see. I want to see one more time. All the time. Okay. Oh, all right, it's I'm gonna so stop. close though. Oh, yeah. oh, it's so good. So the, the thing is, okay, you, you can stop. Um, so I think what so what's I'm gonna turn it off as a because I think it's gonna get really hot. Um, but the thing is that um, 
I only trained that thought, like I did the training session only like once and um, you could like, I trained it like a, an, I didn't train it today. Like I trained it a few days ago and it like saves the training session. So the thing as well is that it's really trying to find a, the, the pattern that you saved when you did your training session. So uh, of course it's not going to be 100% accurate uh, all the time. Because also, I mean, it's the brain and it gets data from like electrodes that you put on top of it. So you can't expect it to be, to know exactly um, like everything that you're gonna think or whatever. But I, what I like to think about is with what we have, like with what it can do, um, you know, build experiences around that. That's why it's like, if you don't, like at the moment I could give that headset to somebody else and the calm and focus should work right out of the box. You know, mm -hmm. the, the thoughts would be able to like, should be trained per person. But then um, here you could see that it, the, you know, I had to have like a weird number and stuff, but I know that when I trained it, uh, I didn't train it to a point where it was accurate all the time, even in the training session. So you can't like, of course I would expect it to not work um, all the time, but you can still, have that kind of experiments where you the scroll was pretty accurate. Of course, it means that you have to focus quite hard on a thought to have an action. Uh, but that kind of, I mean, I don't know. I, th I think it's like really cool. And what you know, what we built here it was like small experiments. But uh, one of the things that I'm uh, looking into at the moment is using raw data and uh, machine learning is to build an experiment or a project that's called. I'm just going to try to Google it to show it. It's called the P300 Speller. Okay. And what it is, it's like a grid like that. So it's really to be able to spell words by uh, thinking about the letter. So what happens is Ooh. that you record, when you train, you record, um, so you have training sessions where, for example, you could have this grid here and it tells you, okay, think about the letter P. Mm -hmm. And the columns and rows flash. And what it records is that usually there's uh, like 300 milliseconds after something happens, you have a spike in brain waves and you, you can record that. So you can have training sessions where uh, it tells you, okay, think about the letter C. And every time the column or the row with the letter C lights up, you count it in your head and you record the data and it, be, it is able to match up the spike that it finds in the brain wave with that column or letter. And if you run enough training um, sessions, you are then able to, not be told what letter to look at. Like you just think, oh, I want to write the letter um, A. So I look at A and I run the flashing of the letters and I count how many times that letter is highlighted. And then by looking at the live data coming from the sensor and the matrix of letter, it's able to find out where my spikes happened and map that to a letter. So you're oh, actually so cool. able to write by actually thinking about the letter, by counting how many times it's uh, on and off. So of course you can maybe write one or two words per like minute, but it's much better than nothing. Like you can you yeah. truly don't have to like touch anything. You're looking at the letter, you're thinking about it, you're counting, you're focusing on how many times it flashes and you're able to uh, write something. So I was trying to build that over the weekend. It worked once and it worked the first time. And I was like, no, that never <laughs> happens. Uh, and then, you know, and then it, it failed. Uh, but, uh, but it was quite cool that it's, I, I know that at the moment, my issue is more about filtering the raw data the right way to find patterns in it. Because I have the code to record the brain waves. I, have the, I wrote the model in TensorFlow.js, so everything in JavaScript. The problem is that um, I, have to write the, I have to find the right filters to pass the data through so that I give it a chance to find an actual pattern instead of having like noise everywhere. Yeah. Um, but that's my next, that's the thing I'm trying to do now. Um, and, and you know, that's why it's like, it starts by pushing a cube, like, or, or a scrolling or playing a, a dino game. But, um, but once you actually get used to that kind of tech and you're able to know, you know, when it works or when it doesn't, you know, the mm -hmm. limitations and, and things and things like that, then you can really go and build uh, you can experiment a lot more and do with what you have. Cause I think at the moment people are like, Oh, it's not, 100% accurate, so I won't use it. But it's like, nothing is really 100% accurate. <laughs> well, and, and the other thing that's really exciting about this is like, if you if you just look at this as a point in time, the same way that say the Commodore 64 was a point in time, the, the distance between Pong and <laughs> like, you know, the, the Last of Us 2 is 
it, it, it doesn't even seem like the same universe, but it's yeah. really not that long in terms of timelines, right? So, so what happens, you know, a few decades of development on this and, and what's going to be possible with, with this kind of neurotech where, you know, we really will be looking at stuff that sounds like science fiction right now, or I, I'm able yeah. to put on a headset and just think my way through whatever interface and it'll just, it'll just work the same way that yeah. when I pick up my PlayStation controller, 3d environments and dynamic lighting you know i saw a demo of of the new unreal engine and it's like hmm. it, it 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 feels impossible that they're able to do stuff like that but you know it's just stacking work on work on work and i think that this you know this is such an exciting place to be because you're building you know you're contributing to this foundation that's going hmm. to be like what happens in 50 years like this is this is the kind of stuff that i can see being deeply tied into our experience of the world in in it's, half a century yeah I, I mean i don't know like i find that so amazing like, i don't know i i don't even think my grandparents know that i'm playing with this but can you imagine if i told them like hey or if i was demoing it in front of them because like, i'm thinking about something and something happens like like from their time where the technology was like kind of like not there was not even like a laptop or whatever and now uh we have that and even if it can't detect everything super accurately, um, first of all, like the hardware is getting better, so it's getting faster. So you can do like machine learning and train like data like on the on the flow and and get mm -hmm. um, the, the stuff that you need. But also, so the software is going to get better, the hardware is going to get better, and I don't think we have to wait that long to be able to build stuff because, as I said, it's like it's also about doing with what you have now. It's like, I don't want to wait for the things to get better when you can build applications now that could help uh, people in a certain uh, way, like, you know, by doing stuff um, at home. Yeah. But even if it's, when I was, th when I was thinking about the P300 um, speller, uh, if I manage to actually get to a level where it's quite accurate, uh, it means that I would have been able to build something maybe for a, a, a friend or a family member that might have to use it one day. And mm -hmm. it means that I won't have to wait for one of the tech companies to release a, a microcontroller or like a, a board that, that is more performant, or I won't have to wait for a, a team of researchers at Apple or Google or whatever to then <laughs> release the device. It's like, I can, I can play with that at home and I can build something that might not work all the time, but maybe for what I will need it to do, like it will be uh, enough. Like my, uh, I don't know if I told you that before, because I said it in my talk a couple of times when I talked about brain sensors, but um, when my grandfather passed away years ago, uh, he basically, like he lost all control of his body in like six months. Like he just, he, I mean, because I was in Sydney, so I didn't see, basically I saw him before he was fine. I came back from Sydney after my six months at uni and he just could not, he was there in his head, like in his mind, but his body was just like not responsive at all. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, well, if it happens, if it's something that runs through my family, I don't know, but it could be my dad or it could be me or it could be my sisters. And it means that even I could build something at home, that means that before one of my family member passes away, they can say something or they can communicate and they can be like, at least, you know, I'm dying, but I said what I needed to say. And even yeah. if it's like a word a minute, I can wait a few hours if it means that you can <laughs> talk to me, you know, and I can do that at home and I can do it in, in JavaScript with a device. So I know that the price can look a bit expensive. I totally understand that. But I think that things are going to be a bit cheaper. Yeah. Um, but I just don't want people to wait and be like, oh, it's not it's not figuring out all of my thoughts all the time. So I'm not going to try it. Um, I just think it's just amazing to me thinking that maybe I'll be able to help a family member or a friend if ever somebody has like an accident or something and I'll be able to be like hey you know what maybe your body can't move but I worked on something and we can still chat yeah. um, I don't know I think it's just like crazy I don't know I don't know what else you can ask for <laughs> yeah no I, it, it's so cool and I love you know I, I love that that this stuff is making it accessible to to kind of build the future, right? Like I, th I think we fixate a little bit in tech on building things that are cool. Um, and like this is undoubtedly cool, but it's <laughs> also, it, it really is like, it feels like it's starting to scratch at the next 
thing. And I, I think yeah. that, um, you know, there, there's, uh, there are whole degrees you can do in like human computer interfaces. Right. And, and like what, what happens next for the way that people interact with the world, especially as more and more the world becomes digital. And, and, you know, you see mm -hmm. all these really interesting proofs of concept with, uh, like glasses that do heads up displays or, or, um, you know, different, different ways of doing authentication and privacy and, and, uh, yeah. and interfaces and stuff. And I think that things that are really, really interesting are, uh, a lot of them are going to come from this type of neurotech, uh, because it's, you know, it, it, it's really interesting to think about like, well, what could we, what kind of security features could exist with neurotech? What kind mm -hmm. of interaction, what kind of communication, um, could we do if we, if we really dig into this and figure out how it works and. You know, I, yeah. I, I am really excited to see the the stability coming up, the price point coming down. Um, it is it is really really cool. And the fact that it's developer focused, that particular headset, and like the the company is dev focused, it really means that they're not trying to like close the doors and not give you access to the to the data or whatever. It's really like we believe that we can build the future and we can come like ideas can come from anywhere so they're trying to make it as open as possible and i love to see uh you know tech companies being that way it's like le let like give the power to the developers to be able to build what they think could be helpful or do some research and then share it because these things will not grow and will not evolve if if we don't Kind of like contribute like all of us everybody who can even with an idea or you could if you, if you are interested in helping but you don't have the headset like mm -hmm. the, their documentation they even just started you know uh you could contribute in open source or that way and i was even thinking i haven't worked on it but i was i wanted to try to build uh an emulator it's like okay mm -hmm. if you don't have the headset i'm sure we can create some kind of like mock api or whatever so that if you're saving up to buy the device or if you want to buy it with a few friends and you haven't received it yet you can still go and uh and play with fake data and still mm -hmm. learn um how to do stuff like that. i haven't worked on that but i thought that would be um interesting but yeah yeah, yeah that's that's super cool stuff and i feel like i could talk about this all day but unfortunately <laughs> we are out of time so, uh, Charlie, where should people go if they want to um, follow up with you and or follow up with uh, with these projects? Um, the best place is um, Twitter because I often share. Uh, I often, I mean, that's my central place. I often share stuff on Twitter. From there, I usually share blog posts or the GitHub repos that I'm working on. But I think my central place is uh, GitHub. Uh, sorry, Twitter. Mm -hmm. And you, you can see some cool like here's here's a demo right here on the on the screen of of. So another, and this looks like a different device, um, doing the, the push away with your thoughts thing. Like just, it's all very, oh, very cool Twitter, stuff. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so, so go over there and then, um, and anywhere else you want people to check out? Um, I mean, I'm, I will well, only to say I'm rebuilding my portfolio, but I've been rebuilding my portfolio for like three years. So, <laughs> <laughs> so do not check that. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, I, I would say my GitHub, uh, my GitHub page uh, is like slash Charlie Gerard, because uh, I try to make all I do open source so that people can, they can see that it's, it's JavaScript. So you mm -hmm. would be able to like read it and, you know, take it if you want and build other things. But as it's JavaScript, if you're a web developer, um, you'll be able to to follow up. Okay, it's sometimes shitty code because I don't have the time. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I get that's yeah, that's, that's my whole existence in the world is like hey, here's something that sort of works. Like I <laughs> hope it's helpful. <laughs> yes. Usually um, I have like a video or a GIF, so it's like I know it works, but uh, yeah. And with that being said, uh, make sure that you go check out the upcoming schedule. We have so much amazing stuff coming on. Uh, later this week, we have Christian Nwamba, uh, also known as Code Beast, coming on to teach us about serverless GraphQL using Hasura. This is going to be a really exciting episode. Some amazing stuff you can do with that. Um, later on, we've got Joel Hooks from Egghead coming on. We're going to build a silly app for Secret Sandwich, uh, which is a game that we play where we try to make better sandwiches than each other. <laughs> I've also got uh, Lucky Number Slevin, a uh, fellow streamer, coming on to teach us about Twitch bots and overlays. This is going to be a whole lot of fun. Um, it just it, And the list just goes on and on. So make sure you go check out the schedule. Uh, if you want to get notified automatically, you can add this calendar, uh, jason.af slash lwj slash cal that will put it into your google calendar so that you can see it coming um as always we had uh 
white coat captioning doing live captions for us so that we uh, are able to make this show more accessible to more people. Um, thank you so much to our sponsors, Netlify, Fauna, Sanity.io, and Auth0 for making this possible. Um, with that, we're out of time. Charlie, thank you so, so much for coming on. Thank I really you. appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. All right. Uh, chat, stay tuned. We're going to raid, and we'll see y'all next time.